ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to city series session two so today we're going to just discuss how to, for structural engineers how to collaborate between civil 3d and revit just to give you guys an overview i'm going to be the presenter for this day my name is Jacques Peterson. i am application engineer at moderna aoc and a quick overview of what are we going to discuss in this city series session is the following we're going to start discussing BIM 360 interface and basic engineering project documentation. For the guys that does not know what BIM 360 is, it's basically a cloud-based collaboration location where we can go and define all our project projects information. And where we can actually collaborate between fellow engineers, architects and even contractors on site. So you can actually do a lot of settings inside of BIM 360. And we will look into some of the functionalities that we have. Then we're going to move on to the actual data sharing between Civil 3D and Revit. So there's two possible ways of doing it. On either side, you can start off with the Civil Engineer, which establishes the site layout and provide the Structural Engineer or the Architect or Revit user with the shared coordinates, location, and topographic information files. Then after that, you can actually send this information to the Structural Engineer, which is the Architect or any Revit user. And he needs to import the location data and create using Civil 3D into Revit model and applying the location as true configuration for the project. So there are multiple workflows out there, but this one really helps you do more accurate work and as fast as possible. So without further ado, <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to teach you how to use Google. It just starts out how to go to BIM 360 like that. So in my normal browser, BIM 360 also has its own account. So you go to your admin b 360 com account. And inside your account, your own company will have its own hub. So inside of this hub, you can actually go and select all of your projects. Now you can have multiple projects and I'm going to select Civil 3D Collaboration Data File. So you have the ability to add a lot of members to this system and actually defining the roles for each of your fellow comrades, as well as giving access to certain elements inside of BIM360, if there's access to data, for documentation management, and so on. You can also have for multiple companies, you can have for certain services, like document management, project management, cost management, design collaboration, and so on and so forth. The profile is basically that specific project's profile and its details. So you can actually define a lot of information inside and you can switch easily between different platforms. I'm going to jump to document management because that's where my files are currently created. So in the document, ma document management tab, you'll find on the left hand side, you can create a substructure folder as such. As you can see, we've got one for project managers and I've got one for civil and structural engineers. So in this case, just to show you exactly these defined folders you can create for yourself. And I just did a quick template. As you can see, for project management, you've got your bill of quantities, contract agreements, emails, invoices, monthly site visits, and tender docs, and even your way leave application documents. So basically, everything can be stored in this cloud and can be shared with your fellow comrades and actually see how it transits. If I go to the civil and structural engineer, it also has its own criteria. So you do have the option to specify the design criteria standards for the civil standards as well as for structural standards which you can actually go and save all of your data information and everybody has access to it the same for the structural standards i have my sans codes which you can go and allocate so everybody knows where to find then i've got a generic project folder which contains architect information documents where they can place in all of their drawings the documentation is my documents i'm controlling as a civil engineer or a structural engineer as you can see, you can add a lot of additional folders. As an engineer itself, this is basically where I would put all of my model files. So I've got for my for civil, I've got even for my PDFs and my XREFs and data shortcuts. For those who use Civil 3 will know what the data shortcut is. As well as the structural models and drawings. So I've got additional folders for my reports and quantities, my structural analysis, my advanced steel, and my Revel models and PDFs. You can also go upload files and upload links files to any of these elements and use them. I even add an additional one for surveyors. Normally, that's what we use to generate topographic service in Civil 3D. So this is just a basic uh, project folder that you can create. 
and it can be reused over and over and over and sent between files. So to start off with the shared location, just want to show you if I switch on my map in Civil 3D, we designed this intersection design. And let's say, for example, I want to share this new layout plan for our existing building, modern our design center. So the first things first, I need to at least have an idea what I'm trying to do. It could be an outline of my paving, outline of a building, anywhere which you want to define that new structure and I want a known point. So if I lay out my paving, as you can see with this rectangle shape, now what I need to do is I need to go define where my shared location point is. So that's where there's going to be a peg on site, exactly indicating that location of that beginning of the project point. So what I need to do is I need to go and if I am in Revit, I can quickly open up and create a new template using structural template. And I can say project and say simply OK. As soon as I do that, what I can do next is there opens up your basic template. Now, the one thing I need to go define is I need to go switch off some of the layers I don't use or some of the views. So I'm going to just delete this level one arc and analytical one and as well as this one. So I'm just left with level one and level two. So what I want to showcase in Revit, normally Revit has two additional tabs. We've got something that is called, if I go down to my VGH site settings, internal origin and project base point and survey base point. So these two are always built in Revit and these two can't be exact same position because that's indicating the site location. So it's currently set to zero, 00, but now I need to go and import this proper data directly. So the one thing I'm going to do is I could actually go and draw out this type of structure or grid indicating my paving. So you could have also drawn out an actual paving if you had an existing model and defining an exact location you want to be displaced. But for now, I'm going to use this there this grid as an example for that exact crossing point to be the locate system and you can see it actually has levels so i want to use that point exactly as its original so as you can see if i jump to site it's still not displaying so i need to go switch this one on as well if i go to type in my visual graphics settings and i go to my site and let's go switch on internal origin project base point and survey voice point and I say apply. Then there's one thing I also want to switch on while I'm still here. I am going to bring in topographic surfaces so I do want to see triangulation edges. So if I say apply and OK, it will add them. So very important, what I want to discuss is I want to use that point as my insertion point in Civil 3D. So what you do need is a site designer in Revit to bring in topographic surfaces as well as an add-on to import shared coordinates from XML files, which you can download on the Autodesk apps. So back into Civil 3D, what I want to do is I need to go define exactly that point. And just to showcase in Civil 3D, you do need Autodesk shared reference point add-on. So both of these can actually be included in Revit and in Civil 3D. So if I do switch off my map, just to make this thing a bit clear to see, I can go zoom into my parking bay, what I want. So just to showcase that I do have a topographic surface, if I go select my surface, which I imported from InfraWorks, as this example, and I can change the style to a contours, gray 0 0.5 and 1 meter intervals, you can see it actually has um, contours inside. Now what I want to do is I want to indicate exactly that point, so I'm just going to use my point creation tool just to dictate to you what that actual coordinate is. So we can compare the coordinates between the two. So if I do select the surface and I select that point, let me just put on my snaps inside of Soul 3D. There's the actual point. Now, if I want to see this actual point coordinates, I just need to go and change the style that displays that information. So I can say point style let's make it a circle and a cross circle circle and across the name i'm going to specify no let's rather specify by yeah if i say name this is very bad let me try rather number or say let's just go back let's see there we go 
there is number or say y x and z so it gives me the y the x and the z value you see these negative values has been included into infoworks is because of that style but technically in the real model they should be negative and the same as in revit so this don't get confused this is just the setting inside in civil 3d so if i had known that point i need to use this export share the reference point by autodesk revit i need to make sure i snap exactly to that point and sometimes it's very critical to just confirm as soon as you do that. So if I try select this origin point, it's going to ask me to specify the true y-axis north. And you can see in this case, I've got a problem. It doesn't pick up my level. It's because sometimes it snaps to the wrong elements. So how I can do this, I can maybe switch off my actual surface. So I go to my properties tab and switch this off. So let's go to no display and it disappears so one additional thing i can also do is i can also go switch on a snap or let's just try it again and see how it works and let's go switch on my snap the node snap also helps a lot i'm going to take these two out and endpoint as well so it sna snaps to that node and i indicate the true north or whichever direction you want this thing to be so i switch on my in snap and sometimes it does not work so just slightly move it down and then select it also sometimes does the job it's just indicating the direction of the y so as you can see it picks up now that exact location and the z value and you can specify the selected dwg unit which is in meters so i can simply say okay after that so if i do specify meters and say okay it's going to ask me to save this file so i can save this file to my bim 360 itself so if i do go select my bim 360 option it will open up that location so as soon as i do that there's my modern bim 360 hub go to my civil 3 collaboration project example as soon as i do that i can go to my civil consulting engineers template go to my civil structural engineers and i can go and space it anywhere i want to if i want to specify it under design criteria or my general project folder so i can go and define it even more in different folders i can go into my engineer folder as well you can basically place this thing anywhere in your model folder where you want to. So in my case, I'm going to say, for instance, I'm going to just place it here and give it a proper name. Let's say parking setting out point. There we go. Let me just quickly fix that parking. There we go. So I'm giving the proper name so I know exactly which point it is. So I can simply say save. And it saves it to BIM360 Cloud for me so everybody has access to it. Then the second option is I need to go and export my existing surface as well to Revit. So to do that, let's go switch back to surfaces and my final roads design. Or I can even do the existing ground. It depends on which everyone you want. So I want maybe the topographic surface of that site. And let's say 0 0.5 and 1 meter intervals. And so we say apply and OK. So what I need to do is I have to go to my home river tab output. And I can export this to LAN XML. So this is what allows me to export my data to a LAN XML. Which will be read into Revit. So as soon as I say export to LAN XML. It will give me a selection which elements to select. So I can either specify points, alignments. Now, I do want to select the existing ground, so I go select that option and simply say OK. So if I say OK, it's going to ask me to save this to a new location. So I'm going to go back to my BIM 360 hub, go to my civil 3D collaboration project example, and go to civil consulting, civil instruction engineering folder. And I can simply go just select it under my gen general project folder. And I can save it somewhere over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the actual NGL. And we can call it NGL and simply say save. So it says the topographic surface. And that's basically done for my part as a silver engineer. If I jump back to Revit. As the structural engineer, the first thing is what I need to do is I need to import that shared coordinate file. So 
So I select under the add-ins import shared coordinates. It's asking me to select the origin. I select that point. So it is the exact point where the parking should start and indicating a true Y value. So as you can see, it's going to ask me for that file. So I go jump back to my BIM 360 collaboration project folder and I go navigate to my generic project folder and locate that parking setting out point. So I'm going to select open. So are you sure you want to create a new shared parking? I say yes. Successfully set the parking, so okay. Now, if I do select on this thing, you see it does not pick it up yet. It's because I still need to tell it in Revit that it should use that location. So if you do want to go set up that setting, you simply have to go to your actual manage tab where you can set up your locations. If you go select the location file itself, you'll find there's now two. There's one if I go to site internal and at parking setting out point if i go select that thing and i say make current i'd simply say okay if i select that option again you see now there we go it's all there perfectly on that exact location in accordance to my civil 3d if i do go to the easting what's very nice about these things you see the coordinates if i select this level and i change the edit type and i set to project base point to survey point and I say apply and OK, you can see that's the exact elevation in Civil 3D without me ever doing a lot of effort. Very nice. And if I double click on my mouse wheel, you can see that's a project base point and the bottom one is where my site is. So it is in the right equator, which is normally the third and fourth quadrant. So this thing is actually on the right position in regards to graphics. If I do want to import, I can go simply to Site Designer and say Import Land XML. It's going to ask me to import the file, so I'm going to say we select my NGL. So if I go to Moderna Design BIM 360 Hub, go back to my Civil Engineering gen, gen, General Project folder, I can go to NGL and say Open. It's going to ask me to import the topographic south and the Land XML. You can also import alignment, but I want to say by survey point because it's exactly the survey point. If I do say OK, it's going to pick up that existing ground. Yes, I'm going to say OK. So then it's going to ask me to give it this proper name. So I'm not going to call it this. I'm going to say NGL rather. You can give it a specific name if you want to. The phase creation, you can say existing or new construction. I'm going to say existing. And you can also override if you want. If I say OK, it says the import process is done. So if I say OK and OK again, and all of a sudden, boom, bang. There we go. Now the entire topographic surface has been brought in, as simple as that. And it's all in the right position, so you don't have to worry about that. And it saves you so much more time. So if I do go to a, a 3D view, now I still need to go just set on those settings. So if I go type in VG for my visual graphic overrides, and let's go switch on my topographic surfaces, and I want to see that triangulation. If I say apply and OK. There we go. So in 3D, you can see it brings in an exact topographic surface for that entire site. So you can still do edits to this site. You can do whatever using your site designer files. It's all there. So if I do go back to my VG graphics, I'm going to switch off that triangular system just to show you what else you can do. So let's just switch this off. And I say apply and OK. As soon as I do that, you see it actually has all of the contours. So, say for instance, I want to go and let's say I've got now all of this information. I want to create maybe an annotate spot corner anywhere besides that point I've already created. So, as you can see, if I can select anywhere in my model, it tells you exactly that coordinate. Nice. As well as if you want to go do a spot elevation, as you can see, I can do the spot elevation, the same thing. The only difference is if the spot elevation, it's not set to survey point this project. So I need to go edit this label style. So if I say edit type and I change this to project base point to, let's say, survey point. And if I say apply and OK, you can see it gives you that exact level. So there's no more of this stuff moving up and down and copying and crazy stuff like that anymore. It's all easy and very proficient. So what else can you do with this thing? 
Well, you can actually go and change these contours and actually add label contours. So if I want to add normal label contours, as you can see, you can go and add for these ones. Now, they are very tiny, so let's quickly change it, and they're also not set to the right settings. So if I do go change this label, I can say edit type, and let's make this text size, let's make it 15. As well as the project base point, I can go change to survey point. And if I want to be very fancy, I can even go change the unit format. I am a civil engineer and I like seeing my contours in meters. So I set it to meters and define the decimal places to two decimal places. And simply say OK. And apply. And OK. And as you can see, it showcased that exact contours for all of those. Very nice. So you can still go and do a lot of edits with these things. You can actually go and select the topographic surface. And if I go to my actual settings for the topographic surface, so if I do go to my masting and site, and I want to change the site settings and change this increments of the contours to let's say 100 or 1000, depends on whichever you want. Let's say 1000. If I say apply, you see it adjusts and add more contours. If I go lower, 500. You can see it changes that amount of contours. If I want to go really small, or if I want to go and dictate two different types, because they are just a secondary contours, you can change it to primary. Now, if I do want to add a new one, I can simply just go and say which increment I want to have. Them. So let's say for primary contours, I want every five meters, which in this case is millimeters. If I say insert, I can add a new one and define exactly which increment I want. So to change that, I can say this should be a multiple value instead of a single value. It will give me access to specify the increments. As soon as I do that, I can go and change the value where to start and stop. So let's just change this to 1 million. If I say apply, they will start changing. Now you can't really see it, the thicknessing, but it can actually be because of a few things. But if you do want to see great to change let's just select hidden lines instead so if I do select hidden lines as you can see and let's say apply and okay and now if I zoom into you see they are now dashed or hidden lines so there's still a lot of tools you can go and play around you can add more contours you can go change these values so you're in full control and accessing all of this topographic surface as you can see you can even reduce that value change some of these increments and go crazy but basically ladies and gentlemen that's how you can actually go and import your existing survey data as well as a known point for your building into Revit without exploding anything moving stuff around and it's actually geo reference on the right location so in my sense, I'm very proud of this workflow because this is so much easier. If I do go to the east, just the last thing to show you, I did one on plan view, but you can also pick up any levels. If I had an existing building, which says, so for instance, top of building, and I used my annotation to select the location on that building, it will tell you exactly that location in regards to the actual project and site, as you can see, by site survey. It will give you that value. So literally, it saves you a lot of time and hassle. So guys, are there any questions? So guys, if you still got a lot of few questions, you're more than welcome to reach out to us and provide us with that questions. Something to note, since we have all in this COVID-19 problem, BIM 360 versus COVID-19, Autodesk actually offers us a free extended access to the cloud collaboration project, BIM 360 Docs and Design. So here we at Moderna has our, we have our own emergency strategic plan, and we assist in setting up your company's project documents, which we call as a quick start. So we will assist you in this dark times. So if you want any more information regarding any of the following, 
either the BIM 360 and COVID free uh, BIM 360 application or if you still have got any more questions for me you're more than welcome to reach out to our lovely sales uh, ladies one is our Katie McKnight our engineering infrastructure director or our lovely little Salome Fouri for civil and infrastructure account manager and they will provide you with that information so well guys from my side I want to thank you for your time and be safe out there and see you guys soon again.